Hey guys, and welcome back to a new UX with Material 3 video. In this video, you will learn how you can implement a bottom navigation view. That is at least how it was called with Material 2. In Material 3, it's called a little bit differently, and that is navigation bar. But its purpose and how it works is exactly the same. So you can see we can add multiple destinations here. So this is really only used for navigation to really navigate to different screens. This is not used to have some contextual actions for a screen like we uh, used for the bottom app bar in the last video. And you can see we can also combine this with showing batches. So if you have a chat, for example, you can show how many unread messages there are. And if you just have a screen where there is some kind of update for the user, so here on the settings screen, maybe there is an, an app update available or so. So you just want to tell the user, hey, uh, look at that screen, there is something for you. Then you can also show a batch without specifying a number like here. And you will learn all that in this video. So you can see where we click on these icons, then the corresponding icon gets highlighted. Of course, there is no navigation here in this simplified example but that can be implemented very easily. So if you want to learn about navigation, I have a separate video about that, but this video is more about using this new Material 3 bottom navigation view. And in terms of guidelines, there is really not too much you need to know to implement that. So as I said, only use this for navigation. Each item should be a destination. And what's worth noting is that you should only use this if you have three to five destinations to show. So if you only have two, so for example, home and chat, then don't use a bottom navigation view because it would look ugly. So only use it if you have at least three, like here, up to five destinations. And I am in an empty Jetpack Compose Material 3 project again. And inside of this surface, we again want to create a scaffold, like in the last videos. And here we want to use the bottom bar again. So it's always um, creating a, a bottom app bar or a bottom navigation view. So you never use both. We can also go on this scaffold, Alt Enter to opt in for this experimental API. Should get rid of this error. The other error can be ignored for now. And in here, in this bottom bar lambda, we want to create our navigation bar. This is the Material 3 version of a bottom navigation view. And if you're building an app for potentially large screens as well, then for these large screens, you might consider using this navigation rail instead, which is a a navigation bar on the left side of the screen, but I will make a separate video about that. So now we want to focus on navigation bar. And yeah, in here we can put some configuration, but we really don't need that because we don't want to change the recommended guidelines for uh, the um, bottom navigation bar. So we can just get rid of that. And in here in this row scope, we just put these navigation actions. And I think it's called navigation. Yes, navigation bar item. So for each item we have, we want to have such a composable here. And what I like to do is I would like to create a little helper class for each item, which just combines the data we need to display it. So we can say bottom navigation item or so. It needs a title. It needs a selected icon, which is an image vector. So the icon we want to display if we are currently are on that screen. We have an unselected icon, image vector. We have a um, has a news boolean. If that is true, we just indicate we want to show this um, little red bubble. And we want to have a batch count integer, which is nullable. So if that's null, that means we don't want to show a batch count, which would be uh, this uh, chat bubble here. So if it's 12, then we would show this uh, batch bubble with a uh, number of 12. And if it's null, then we don't show uh, such a number at all. Then we can scroll down right inside of our theme here and create our items list. So that's just a list for all of our navigation items. And we can say we have our, uh, what did they call it? Bottom, bottom navigation item. The title for this one would be home for our first item. The selected icon is icons default, actually not default. Um, the selected icon would be icons filled dot home. Um, so that is a requirement, or it is at least very recommended um, by the Material 3 guidelines, uh, that if an item or if, a, if the user is on a specific destination, like on home, for example, the icon for that should be filled. If the user is not there, it should be outlined. And that is exactly what's happening here. You can see if I'm on settings, then uh, the settings icon is filled. If I go to home, then it's outlined again, and the home icon is filled instead. So we also want to provide this unselected icon which is just the same icon, but we get it from outlined like this. We then have has news, 
for the home icon uh, for, for the home item that is false so we don't want to display that a batch bubble and the batch count would be null yes that uh, we can leave that at the default we can then take this copy it do the same for chat i don't think i have the chat icon here in the normal icon set you can add the extended icons dependency if you want but i will just uh, set this to email here so we have a similar icon at least here we want to set has news to false because we instead want to use this batch count and we can set this to whatever we want so obviously in a real chat app you would need to assign whatever uh, number you want to display here so for example the amount of unread messages the user has and last but not least i'm not sure if we have the settings icon yes we do so we can change this to settings change the um, icons to settings and this time we say has news true so we say hey well there's a new update for the app or so please go to the settings page so we have our list of bottom navigation items we now want to use this list inside of this navigation bar. You can see we get a row scope here and whatever composables we put here will be arranged in a row. The spacing will already be considered, the alignment will already be considered, so we just need to loop over our items. For each index, we get the index, we get the current item we're looping over, and for each of these items, we now want to display our navigation bar item. Well, we also want to have some state because we need to tell each item if it is selected or not. We also get an on-click lambda, which should be pretty clear, I guess. And we get an icon, which is just a lambda, um, where we can display the icon. And let's set selected to false for now to make all items unselected. How do we now achieve that we can dynamically select these items? Well, for that, we need some form of state. And that's pretty simple though. We can just go ahead here and say, we have a specific selected item index by remember savable. So remember savable just to make sure it also survives screen rotations and configuration uh, and, and uh, process that I'm meaning. But typically you would also store this in a view model, for example. So here we have a mutable state of, which is equal to zero initially. So the very first item is selected by default. For some reason, it does not let me import remember savable. So we can just scroll up. Go to our import section, duplicate this uh, runtime mutable state off, and change this to set value, duplicate it again, and set it to get value. These are just the imports we need. We can collapse this again, scroll down, you can see the error is gone, and we can now take this state and pass it here. So a specific navigation bar item is selected if our selected item index is the same index as the index of that, icon, uh, of that item. Should be clear, I guess. And if we click on a specific item, then we want to change our selected item index to exactly that index we're currently looping over. And if you would now also want to navigate, and then in here, you would just use your nav controller from your nav host and call that navigate, and you would navigate to item.title, for example, assuming the route of your screen is the same as the icon's uh, item's title. If that's not the case, you would need to add an additional property to each item, which would represent the route where the user should get when they click on the item. Since we don't have that nav controller here, I will just comment that out. What is now interesting is this icon. That is very simple. If we just want to display an icon, like for our home icon here, so there's a little home symbol, but we also need to adjust this to support displaying such batches with the numbers and displaying such badges without any number. And we do this by using a so-called batched box. So the batched box is just a box which allows us to place a batch or not. But if we want to place a batch, then this batched box makes sure it's at the right place. So let's do that. You can see we get a batch here, which is a lambda. And here in the content of this batched box, so this trailing lambda, this would just be our normal icon. So the icon would have an image vector and a content description. The content description would just be our current navigation item and the title. And the image vector depends on whether this icon is selected or not, because if it's selected, we want to use this selected icon, and if not, we want to use this unselected icon. So we can check if the index is equal to selected item index. If our item is selected, then we want to use 
item.selected icon and else we do item unselected icon like this for our batch now how do we display that we first of all want to check if we even want to display a specific batch for that item so if the item.batch count is not null that means we passed a specific number we want to display that means we want to display a batch with a specific number and for that we use a normal batch and in here we place our text that displays that number so item dot batch count and probably also dot to string since that is an integer and else if item has an use so if we just want to display the batch bubble without any count then we just say we have a batch and don't change anything about that so if the badge does not have any content we just leave it as the little red bubble and else so if the batch count is null and we don't have any news then we don't display a batch at all cool so that is it for our icon the last thing that remains is our label so we can pass a label composable which is just our text so very simple text and that should be our item that title if we launch this and take a look here then we should hopefully see something very similar as i showed you before yes we do so we do see our batch with 45 new messages if we click on that you can see it gets highlighted the home one as well and the settings one as well of course if you click on that it would be up to you that you also remove this batch again that would just be done by updating our items list so first of all we would need to make this items list a state and then we would need to update it and for example setting this has news boolean to false for the settings screen when we click on that so then it will also get updated here um, as long as that items value is actually a compose state one last thing i can show you is uh, another option we can pass here oops and that is always show label which is true by default so this means um, for all items, uh, the label is shown by default. You can set this to false to hide the labels completely. This is not recommended. If we take a look here, uh, okay, it actually shows the label for the selected option. So, so that is something you can do and that uh, the selected option shows what the screen actually is. But what is definitely not recommended is that you hide the labels completely so that you don't have any labels at all and just use these normal icons because that wouldn't add enough context for all users. So just add as, as much as info as you can in this little space to let your users know where they will get when they click on these specific icons. So very cool. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then definitely subscribe to this channel to not miss any of these future Material 3 videos. There are still quite some more to come. I wish you an amazing rest of your week and I will see you back in the next one. Bye bye.